Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited to be talking to the fantastic team behind the movie The Retreat. We have the writer Alison Richards and actors Sarah Allen and Tommy Amber Peary. And Alison, I wanted to start with you in talking about the narrative structure of the script and writing it, and what were a lot of the structural elements and beats to the script that were really important for you to really hone in on and get right before you started fleshing out and adding a lot more of the layers and details to these characters in the story? Yeah, great question. I mean, I think one of the things that I thought initially going into this is that, oh, it's a horror movie. That's going to be really easy to write. Um, and I think it's actually, I learned after doing many, many drafts of terrible versions of it, that it's not actually that easy to write a thriller horror. So I think it was sort of coming up with those satisfying sort of like big picture beats that would make sure that, you know, there was enough um, meat on the story to, you know, to, to last a feature film and making sure that the characters were strong enough that you were invested enough in their journey and felt like you wanted to go with them and, uh, you know, and root for them through that experience. And then Sarah and Tommy, for both of you, you know, so much of developing a character goes beyond the pages that you have in the script. And for a project like this, what were the types of questions and conversations that you were having with Alison and with Pat Mills, the director of the film, to really understand a lot of the nuances beyond the dialogue and beyond the action that were in the script pages you had? That's a really good question. Um, it's so funny because every time I approach a film, I feel like on the first day, I always kind of go in having done my work, but then I, I really rely on the director and if the producers are involved in the way that Alison and Laura were, I really rely on them every day. I, I'm one of those actors that I'm like constantly checking in. Like, are we on the right page in terms of the arc? Is this where we need to be? Maybe, maybe it's too much so because I just, because you shoot a movie out of sequence, you know, and often you're shooting, you know, I actually, you know what, I think we shot, a really pivotal climax scene on like the first day yeah. where, you know, I'm, you know, bound to the, to the ground and I'm, it's just like a really kind of cathartic, you know, uh, big moment for Renee's character. And it's like, as an actor, like, is this where I'm supposed to be? Is this where, where, where this is all supposed to land? So those are the types of questions that I was asking personally. And then also being able to collaborate with Sarah and every day just, you know, the thing that I love about Sarah is that we're both we're both just kind of like, are we are we doing okay? Is this the <laughs> thing? Are we is this like, you know, really finding a levity to it, you know, like you take it seriously, but also, you know, being able to collab and the collaboration aspect is so important. Like these things aren't done, you know, individually, like relying on everybody as a team is vital. So yeah. I think the first day or before we started shooting, um, we had to talk about like backgrounds, like who these people are, um, like how they found themselves to be together and why they're together and why their relationship's important to them and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so that was good, some good groundwork to, to have at the beginning. And then, yeah, I think they just let us fly. And we, we shot that one, that one pivotal moment, like the end, kind of like the end of the movie at the mm -hmm. at like the second day or something and mm -hmm. oh actually no i think the first day there was sarah and i had an intimate scene yeah first, first day, day we got That's to know each other we really got to know <laughs> each other on the first day so that was a nice icebreaker because we got good job allison yeah, it was the way the schedule went. <laughs> right, the way the schedule went. <laughs> um, so we, we got acquainted and it, from there, it, it was actually a blessing in disguise because we could just like jump and launch right in. Yeah, I think our second day we got to be in a car, just you and I in a car with like no cast. So fun. Around. <laughs> just, we annoyed the hell out of everyone. Yeah, we? we put yeah. on a whole other show. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're working on a project like this, it seems like it was a very intimate crew overall and it, there's not very many cast written into the film either. And so how did the intimacy of, of the environment on set really help with capturing a lot of that intimacy within the film for all of you as well? Well, um, you know, we shot this in Orangeville and everybody um, 
you're right. It was a really small, it was a small, you, when you're working with a small cast and crew, you vary, even if it was a four, how long, how, how many days was the shoot? Like 15 days, something like that. No, I think it was like 20. Five. Yeah, it was five weeks, I think. Oh. Yeah, 25. <laughs> well, that's good, then. It went that well, Tommy. It went that well, but it felt like, what, it was like a two day shoot? <laughs> there were two weeks there where you were, you were pretty, you were pretty sick, yeah. maybe. Totally. <laughs> right. Yeah. There was, um, there, I mean, that's a, it's, it's actually a blessing to have like a 25 day shoot because uh, often you yeah. don't these days. It's like, let's shoot a feature film in eight days. <laughs> um, but yeah, the intimacy of the cast and crew, you know, all of us seeing each other all day, every day. I mean, I, sure, it definitely helped. We're always, we often shooting in really small spaces. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if that's answering your question. Yeah. It is. And it's actually to that point, yeah. 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 Um, but Alison, I wanted to ask you about the intimacy and the setting of the location, because it really, it feels like in the directing of the film that that was a very specific detail in terms of a lot of the narrative flow, even at the scripting stages and the early development of this story. Um, and so I just wanted to ask you about the journey of figuring out what was really vital that the location needed to have in order to tell this story in the way that you wanted it to end up appearing on screen. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. So I, I wanted to, um, I actually wrote with a location in mind so that there was things that we could make sure that we had access to, and then they would also equally inspire stuff. So there was some stuff that, um, you know, we, Pat Mills and I, uh, would go and walk this property and, you know, the, the severed deer head, for example, we actually came across that and both screamed. So we were just walking and it just like, we turned a corner and there it was, and both of us screamed. We're like, that should go in the movie. Um, and then there were some other things like we found this sort of dilapidated cabin and there was a rare, there was a, a draft of the script where I wrote that in, but you know, it didn't make it cause it didn't make any sense. So there was a segue where there was a dilapidated cabin, which, you know, just felt like it was overstuffing, <laughs> over, overstuffing at that point. Um, but it was nice to, uh, especially when you're making a smaller budget film, um, you know, it was nice to have stuff to write to so that you're not, you know, then having to pair stuff back of being on the opposite end where you have sort of an idea in your mind, but then you can't find the location or you can't, afford the location. So you end up having to simplify everything. Um, so that was kind of, that was kind of the idea. I was trying to sort of like, you know, wherever possible, not that we didn't end up, you know, of course it's a movie. So it's the actual cabin is nowhere near where the property is. And the gas station is not like everything is kind of piecemeal as far as how it actually got put together. But there were certainly some places that we had seen that were put in the movie. And then when it comes to the tone of the film, I wanted to ask you all about those first few scenes in the movie, because it feels like almost in order to have the payoff of the suspense and the tension that you kind of have to build that sense of, you know, everything feels OK, but also starting to sprinkle in a, an idea that there's something really foreboding coming, you know, and there's lots of really fantastic moments that make you jump a little bit, even when nothing's happened yet. And there's that build of uneasiness. And so for the writing and the performances, I was, I was interested in how you all worked to really construct that at the beginning of the film in those first few minutes for us? I mean, I can talk about the writing side of it as far as tone. So I think with, you know, uh, it's a genre movie. So there's certain things it has to deliver on. You kind of need to be in that world. One of the things that was really important to us was to make something very grounded. We wanted them to feel like real people in a real world in a real situation. Cause I think that's the type of, uh, I find that much scarier than, you know than other types of um, horrors and thrillers. Um, and so that's where I think, you know, having uh, people like Tommy and Sarah who are so great at grounding things and making, like there was a couple of scenes where I was like, oh my gosh, I never thought this would work. And they would work it through between the two of them and just make, you know, really embodied these people and gave them so much dimension, which I am very grateful for. And did the and team I, I, find that that played well, into your performance at all in terms of that tension or was it really just focused on character during those scenes? I mean, to be honest, I, I guess I, I, I don't really, I don't really think like that. I guess that's, I, I would credit a lot of that to the editing, I guess. I like, I, I was just like, in terms of my character arc, I just knew where I needed to be and, and what I needed to do. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, it's like, let's hope this, you know, shit works out. 
<laughs> and then Tommy and Sarah, I wanted to talk a little bit about your process in working with each other and building the backstory. What's the chemistry? What's the dynamic of this relationship? Because there's also the interesting aspect that, you know, their commitment levels and where they see this relationship going, you know, they're not necessarily on the same page at the beginning of the film. And actually what they go through helps them to reach that point almost. Um, and so what are the ways in which the two of you worked together to figure out their backstory details, like when they met or how much of that did you feel was necessary? I know that we had a discussion with Pat um, before we started shooting, just to, just to kind of set us on the right track. And we, we kind of worked through a lot of details, like kind of spitballed ideas and things. And then I think after that, we just kind of went off on our own and filled in the holes that we needed to fill in for ourselves individually. Um, and then, the other part was just being open, I think, to each other because, you know, it was, it was pretty, it's pretty easy to work with Tani because she's very vulnerable and, and, you know, like lovable and all that kind of stuff. So you just, just, I don't know, just, just kind of throw yourself in and let it happen really for, for me. And I, I totally echo that. I think that's also due to like the casting we had gone through, um, uh, we'd gone through a little bit of a, a casting process initially. Um, I had been cast and then we were trying to find um, the Valerie to Renee. And um, I think we spent, some, we spent some time and I know it was really important, you know, to, to, to everyone to make sure that what was gonna really, you know, take this movie off the page was the relationship between Val and Renee. And um, there were many, many options, I think, you know, kind of rolling around. But at the end of the day, you know, after a few chem reads between Sarah and I, it was like, this is what we have to do. Because if you can bank on that, like that two actors can have chemistry in a, like, like a dowdy audition room, that's like <laughs> reeks of pee and dust or something or old coffee, that you can be sure that they can. <laughs> jump into these characters and uh, and and make that work. And so it's the same, like working with Sarah every day. I, I genuinely love working with Sarah. Yeah. It was so fun. Oh it was just so fun. And yeah, tons of laughter, really smooth, really easy, really open, really vulnerable. And it was really important to me on that note that, you know, that this relationship was represented, this, you know, lesbian relationship is represented authentically and being a lesbian myself, it was really fucking important to me to have that, um, to have that uh, uh, filmed and, and expressed in a way that felt real to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't want to be a part of something that felt like tropey or like over-sexualized from like the male, you know, gays. It was like, and that's why I love so much being a part of this film and being able to do that with Sarah made it that much easier. Yeah, like the, that for me, that was what made the film so, the character so easy to find, the relationship so easy to find. It just felt real. It didn't, yeah. yeah I didn't and that's why Sarah and I are married now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell me that, congrats. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like so much of the richness of that relationship and everything that you were both just speaking to you know you can tell that there's a lot of attention paid to that every stage of the filmmaking and starting with the writing and Alison it really feels like you've used the lesbian couple at the center of this story to juxtapose the way that we so frequently see queer characters in cinema which is supporting someone else's narrative or just you know particularly in horror and suspense films as being very disposable and so I thought it was an interesting trajectory in the way that you use external circumstances to bring this couple closer together rather than pushing them apart. And was that a really conscious thought of yours at the very beginning of the development process even, or was it something that you found along the way? No, it was a hundred percent that, I mean, that it was, there was like basically two, two reasons that I wrote this originally was it, first and foremost. So my wife and I were at a remote retreat in the middle of nowhere and it was picturesque and serene and beautiful, but we kept feeling like we were being watched. And every time we'd leave and go for a walk, there'd be little notes left for us. And so it was this idea of like, this is really nice, but we also felt really vulnerable and we felt vulnerable as women, but as queer women. And so then my active imagination kind of went down, you know, that was kind of where the genesis of the plot came. But really um, simultaneously, there was movies that I was watching, like, I don't know if you've ever seen High Tension, which is actually a great movie, but it's a, a horror movie that, you know, the big kind of twist, spoiler alert, is it's like, it's the crazy lesbian. And so I think... 
um, both myself and Pat Mills being horror fans really wanted to, you know, make a straightforward horror movie thriller where the queer characters weren't crazy, didn't turn on each other. Cause that's the other big, you know, big trope in these types of movies. It's like, but one of them turns on them and tries to kill them because she's crazy, you know? So I think it was really important that they were representative of, you know, uh, people, people that I know in the queer community who are, you know, regular folks with very, you know, complex, complicated lives. And so I really wanted to have sort of these three dimensional characters that weren't, um, weren't tropey and, you know, didn't die or turn on each other. <laughs> but Alison, it also sounds like you had a really collaborative relationship in the way that you worked with Pat, you know, in the way that she came on board and, and directed your script. And what were some of the early things that the two of you talked about that were really important to transfer onto screen from a lot of the time that you had spent in developing the script even before she came on board? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, so Pat and I had made, uh, this is actually our third feature together. So he wrote and directed the first two and then I wrote and he directed this one. Um, but, uh, you know, we really wanted it to feel real. We really wanted it to feel grounded and we wanted it to be entertaining. So it, you know, those were kind of the things that we kept as our driving force is like, let's put real people in a real scenario um, and make sure that, you know, it, it's an entertaining journey for those that are watching it. And then Sarah and Tommy, I wanted to talk a little bit about the blocking for a lot of the scenes where your characters are, essentially, you know, basically tied up and, and being tormented because there's also very limited light. And so it feels like you had to be very specific in your performance and a lot of the movement. And so I was interested in, in how, how much structure and how much choreography went into those scenes versus how much freedom you had just because of the circumstances and in, in how it looks like it was filmed. Mm. I always find this such, um, it, it's, a fast, it's a really, really great question. Um, luckily, you know, uh, the cinematographer and our lighting designer um, were able to kind of, I never felt like, this, the, the concept of blocking to me, I understand. Sometimes, sometimes you'll show up on set and they'll be like, hey, so you're gonna stand here and you're gonna stand here and you're gonna say your lines and like make it happen. And it's like, sometimes there's those jobs. And then luckily, with this awesome movie, independent movie, is that you're able to like, it's important to me that we are able to find it naturally. And so I always love a, an initial kind of just blocking with, with the director, producers, fellow actors that is gonna allow us to organically. And even if it takes a little bit of time, I always find that it ends up being a better a better situation for everybody because if the organic movements of like the actor is fighting it's just going to help lighting it's going to help the directing it's going to help everything else um so i never felt um like i had to i mean there were a few situations but i never felt like i had to like kind of um find i always life. felt like my, yeah exactly like i was always cons the, uh, our characters and our what we wanted to do was were always cons does that is that did you feel the same way sarah yeah, to be honest, I don't think that was even ever a conversation. Like I never thought of that. I don't know if I uh, thought. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, uh, you, you know, maybe we would have been asked to stand, you know, to take that scene a little, like two feet to the left or something. But they let us find the scene before they kind of put those, put those requests upon us. Um, but yeah, no, every everything was pretty easy. I feel like even though like the lighting and the and the, uh, the direction of photography, it was all very collaborative. Yeah. Yeah. That's really fantastic to hear. And then one of the other things that I wanted to ask you both about was also in the trajectory of your characters, you basically have to take them to a point at which in order to survive and the resilience that they need, they understand and are willing to take someone's life, which 24 hours isn't something that they would have even considered. So that's a really huge arc and journey for them to go on. And so I was interested in, in how you worked in building them up to that point where it feels very natural that these two characters would be like, we're going to go out there, we're going to kill them, we're going to take this into our own hands and everything's going to be totally fine. Hmm. Um, well, okay, let me say. <laughs> what did you say? It's kind of like a, 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 a fantasy of anger, like, you know. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, you know, I mean, this is, it's a big question because there's so much happening in the world right now. And it's like, it kind of falls under this, like we, yeah, like our, we had the opportunity, to, we, we reacted with violence, right? Like this is what we came, but 
wait, what's the question? There were so many things <laughs> rolling around in that question. Like, honestly, look, I don't think it was a matter of like, oh, hey, we're going to kill them and like all is better. I think it was actually a representation of like where I came in, Renee's like guarded and uh, can't, um, that's Winnie. <laughs> um, Sarah, you go. Can you ask the question again? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> it's really in, in how you figured out in building the arc of these characters that 24 hours prior, taking someone's life never would have been part of a conversation for them. And then they're reaching a point where emotionally and mentally, they're not only prepared to, but that's kind of the ultimate goal in order to survive for them. Yeah, I, well, I think it was just that survival. I don't think we were really left with much of a choice. We had nowhere to run to. We had to take it into our own hands. Um, and some pretty awful things that happened to us. Um, and if it was fight or flight, it was fight at that point. Like yeah, there was, there's no choice. I don't think we went into being like, hey, you want to rent an Airbnb and kill someone? Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like it just happened and, and it had to happen. And I think that happening, you know, for a lot of people is unfortunately a dream but it's not necessarily the right way to go. Mm. It's absolutely not the right way to go. But uh, in a lot of these situations, but, you don't have that opportunity to work it out. Yeah, and sort of like in being put in the position that we were put in, we were forced to react. Everything was a reaction. It was a reaction, not necessarily a choice. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, in making any project and in particular when you're working in independent cinema, there's always obstacles and hurdles and it's unique with every project. And so what were the, what were the kind of like the specific challenges and obstacles and hurdles in order to make and execute this film with all of you? <laughs> the weather. <laughs> definitely, definitely the weather. The, I would say the last day would be a great example. So this, the, the, um, the scenes that take place inside the gas station. That was actually oh all my the, that was our last day of shooting. And that was all actually written to be outside. So there was a whole bunch of uh, orchestration with a bunch of different characters. It was all around the gas station pumps. And the day that we showed up uh, happened to be, for whatever reason, the coldest day of, of the year in the fall. And it snowed and there was a cold weather snap and there was a blizzard. So there was no way we could shoot it outside. So I was busy sort of rewriting the scene to try to make it work inside the gas station, even though half of the conversation was really scripted about them talking about gas, which made no sense anymore. So I think, you know, that day was just trying to scramble to make it all make sense. And then of course, Tommy and Sarah shows up and it's like, here's your brand new script. I know you've prepared something else, but now we're inside. And, you know, and so I think, weather across the board we had all seasons we shot you know over five weeks but we had winter spring summer fall it seemed like every other day it was a totally different season yeah. it was weather and it was also it, for me it's the most physical movie i've ever done mm -hmm. in my career unbelievably physical and even like i think I remember when we were on set al and you were like oh yeah i wrote it but i didn't realize somebody had to actually do it <laughs> And, and me too, I was like, oh yeah, I've read it. And like, I love this part, but oh my God, like it was so beyond physical. And as an athlete, I, I loved it and I soaked it up. It really was, I was in my element, but there were some days that was like, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Also to, to just as an actor to, to really jump into like to be tied to a post and just jump into the terror and the betrayal and all the other uh, awful emotions that were that we had to, to go through. Um, that was a lot of fun and challenging. It was great. It's so great, Sarah, though, that you were able, like you're, that you're like a good actor. <laughs> like you're good. <laughs> you, like, good job, guys. No, just like, like it's like, they, oh, it just would have sucked so hard if we were like, we had to go to those places and I was so prepared to go there. And so were you, which not only it just made our individual performances, I think that much stronger, but also as a team and that we could be there for each other and be like, Hey, what do you need right now? Yeah. It would be, like, what do you need? It would have been very easy to take, like, like it would have been an option would have been to take the easy way out and, and not, and not commit. But on, on like Tommy is like being the number one 
you know, she really led the charge, I think, and in, in committing to the scenes. So, <laughs> you know, uh, when when it came time to 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 do something like that, kind of look over at Tommy and be like, oh, shit. <laughs> She's going, and you're like, "Well, I guess I gotta go too." So <laughs> it was a bless. It was a blessing. It was <laughs> great. And because you mentioned uh, the physicality, Tommy, as well, and, and the challenge yeah. of that, um, I actually wanted to ask you both two things about the physicality in it, in that, you know, in shooting a film like this as actors, a lot of times you're taking your body through an emotional experience and your body physically doesn't necessarily know that it's a construct. And, you know, particularly for projects like this, I was interested, you know, if you had any sort of like physical feeling in your body as you were shooting a lot of the scenes and then also how you took the physicality of your characters again as part of their ever evolution and if there was a consciousness because even just the way that you move around as characters at the beginning of the film is very different to the way that they move around later in the film once they've developed this resolve out of necessity. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to unpack that a little bit. I think, I mean, personally, as Renee, I felt like Renee's, her physicality was much more rigid than mine is. There's something, as we're kind of like mid-shoot, I was like, oh, there's something that uh, to her that's much more guarded. And I mean, I'm a, I could be a guarded person, don't get me wrong. But her kind of, um, where, she, where she is personally in her life resulted in her physicality being a little bit more kind of rigid at the beginning, it eventually opened. Um, but I guess the, if you're asking me if I like, did I physically feel the repercussions of, of the shoot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 I did. Like, definitely, it was like, is that what you mean? Yeah. Is it, is it, oh God, yeah. I mean, I could send you some pics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts, it was so nuts. Like my body took a beating, but I'm, I'm kind of, um, uh, would a mask be the, the right word for that? Like if in the, like I, I just like, all right, let's jump in. So I'm, 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 a, I'm an athlete that's like really hard on herself. So in this, in this is like the perfect thing for, for what we were doing. Cause I was like, no. <laughs> and then by the end of the shoot, I was like, I'm going to die. <laughs> Oh yeah. So, yeah. It, was, it was hard. It was hard on you for sure. It was very hard. And that was the thing to what Tommy said earlier. Like I wrote it being like, this would be really fun. And then when we were shooting it and I was like, this is not fun. This is, why would I make these people do this? This is terrible. Yeah. I'm like, on their phones being like, oh God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that the same for you, Sarah, in terms of just like the physical experience for your body and then also thinking about any of the trajectory and how you wanted her to move a little differently as the story progressed? Yeah, I mean, we were, um, I, I had the, the ankle, the, the ankle injury to focus oh. on, which maybe <laughs> became a bit of a distraction. Um, but I, I feel, I, 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 I mean, I hate to put it like, I, I obviously read the script and do the homework and then I think things just kind of happen um, when you get to set that you're not necessarily expecting, but you're like, oh, I guess moving like this is, is normal in that kind of situation or I don't know. So a lot of it wasn't planned um, and it happened. I felt like she, um, the trajectory of, of um, Val, I think for me was being such a trusting, open, confident person to at the end sort of having to really uh, grapple with shame and uh and uh maybe her her worldview being sort of uh, dirty a little yeah well it's a really really fantastic film and congratulations on all of your work on it and the accomplishment and thank you so much for this conversation really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you